The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. Back from our little week hiatus, we took a couple a couple trips. We both went on a trip. Uh, so we were both a little jet-lagged and things like that, but we're ready uh, to talk full swing football. We're in the thick of it now. Uh, Big Ten play is right around the corner at this point. Um, NFL season week one was fun, a little bit weird, um, but we got a lot to talk about. So we got to co- start with college football, and we got some news. We haven't really talked about it, uh, but the college football playoff is going to expand. Uh, I don't know exactly what year they said it's going to. If it's, I think they said as early as twenty twenty four potentially. Okay, that's what that's what I was thinking. It was twenty twenty four. Um, anyway, they're going to twelve teams, and weird number to stretch to. Yeah, a lot of people thought it was just going to go to like eight or something like that, even six, some people thought. Um, so 12 is quite a lot, quite a big jump. I don't know how I feel about it yet. I, I like having more meaningful games, I guess, but when you look, we'll get to the rankings in a minute, and we'll kind of see when you look 1 through 12, usually once you start to get out of that top six or so, you feel like those top teams are just going to blow them out of the water. So we'll we'll have to see, wait and see how that happens. Um, but the other big news that I really wanted to get into, there's been rumors that ESPN, because of this playoff expansion, doesn't necessarily want to shell out the money or feel like they have the budgeted money to have all these primetime games. I guess at this time of the year, I'm not sure if because of the NFL season and whatever else is going on, that they don't want to do it and they might defer to somebody like Apple TV and Amazon. And those are streaming services. So Malik, what are your what are your first thoughts when I say college football playoff may be streamed and you may have to have a streaming service to watch it? If I was to go extreme, I would say something like, This is the death of college football. How can we come back from this? This is, it's the end, but I, I won't go that extreme. I hate it. I do hate it. It's football coming to streaming was inevitable, and it, that's not the horrible part. The horrible part of every single decision from now on in college football being nothing but money motivated, conferences almost meaning nothing anymore because anybody from any side of the country can just join into some super group TV contracts getting higher and higher. It's it, it's all just blending together into mm-hmm. it, it's a it's just it's a it's a big collage of just I I don't know I I don't know where this is headed. Some people say this is positive. I don't see much positive in it. I think the play I think the playoff expanding is a positive. Mm-hmm. But I think an eighteen playoff was the most balanced thing they could have done. And, yeah, going 12, it's all to just stretch things out. It's all to, yeah, just make more money through TV and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I hate yeah. it. Yeah. I, I don't see the upside to whatever they want to do. And I'll be biased here, too. Like, if it's on Apple TV, I'm not going to watch it. I'm going to absolutely hate it. If it's on Amazon, technically I yeah. have Amazon. Watching the 1 versus 12 matchup yeah. on Apple TV or Amazon – the ratings probably won't be super high outside right. of the fans of the teams. Yeah. And, like, I have Amazon. So, if it's on Amazon, okay, that, sure, fine, whatever. I'll, I'll figure a way to watch it. Thursday Night Football has been moving to Amazon Prime and stuff like that. So, whatever. But I hate the idea. And 
it's getting worse and worse with all these streaming services. Like every single network is doing their own streaming services. And now it, it just, it's at first like streaming sounds so nice. It's like, oh, you can build your own kind of package almost like, oh, I could have Netflix and HBO Max and I'll be good. But it's not that way anymore. It's like each service has their their thing or their show that you want to watch. And that's the basically the reason that you get it. Yeah. And then after that, it's kind of like, oh, well, if I need if I want to watch this, I'm going to need this streaming service. But if I want to watch that, I need this streaming service. And now because sports and things are getting into these streaming services, it's just getting scarier and scarier, to be honest. And I despise it. One, because I like to save money and I feel like I'm just throwing away money. I got rid of cable a long time ago because it just kept going up in price. Streaming is starting to get to that point. Yes, it's. Technically, it's cheaper by the month, but once you start adding all your streaming services up, it's almost cable. <laughs> you're basically back to cable. Yeah, luckily I still watch Netflix. I hope they're not listening. I still watch Netflix on somebody else's account, like yes. most other people, and I, I won't get Paramount Plus because I haven't. I have Hulu. I have HBO Max. I have Disney exactly. Plus. I have those already. Right. Apple TV is only five ninety nine. I, I think still they have great TV. Hmm. This goes beyond sports. This whole yeah. thing, but yeah, it all connects. Right, but. I would hate it. I, I feel like there'd be a lot of backlash to it. I would say ESPN needs to try to figure it out, get a deal done, and just do it. They're owned by Disney. I don't know how they can't – what the actual issues would be. Yeah, and there, there's a whole bundle with, like, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, and I forget forget what else. Right. They're all bundled together. I don't know, yeah, I don't know why they couldn't just strike a deal. It's – I don't know how the, uh, the business stuff, right. it's the, all a bunch of craziness that us people just would never understand. Yes. But it's very sad news for college football, and it could be a detriment to what people are excited about as of getting an expansion. So, a little unfortunate. We'll see where that goes. Great things to look forward to. <laughs> Great things. Exactly. Um, okay, so we're a couple weeks now into the season of college football. We've got two games under everybody's belts. Big big surprises in this past week. And so far, it's been fun. I've been enjoying it. Um, so let's go through the top 25 here, and we'll just kind of recap uh, very quickly what these teams have been doing. So we got Georgia number one. They look like the class really of college football. Really nothing right to now. talk about. They mm-hmm. haven't had any craziness. But number two right away, Alabama. And the big one was last week against Texas. They beat Texas 20 to 19. And Texas had control of this game. I think they should have won. A lot of weird calls. Quinn Ewers went down after he was looking fantastic. Um and uh, it was just heartbreaking for for Texas to lose that one. It it was weird because I don't really like either of these schools. But, of course, when push comes to shove, I'm going to root for the underdog, especially against Alabama. And, man, it was so close. What were your thoughts on this game? I think if Quinn Ewer stayed healthy, Texas would have won. Because, obviously, all of the hype of him coming out of high school and being one of the highest-ranked quarterbacks ever, going to Ohio State, getting the NIL deal and leaving and coming back home to Texas. Week one, he was decent. It looked like he was getting his footing under him. And the first quarter against Alabama, he just – he looked like the guy mm-hmm. everybody has been talking about. The effortless arm strength. He barely has to step into throws to just put velocity and accuracy onto them. He he kind of overthrew a few passes, but he was on. Mm-hmm. He was clearly focused, and he was ready to play Alabama. And Alabama was – I don't think they were fully ready to take that punch from the beginning. Right. And Quinn Ewers threw one in the Texas offense. And the Texas defense was surprisingly good as well, which I, I really don't know what to take out of this game, whether they they just were super motivated and got up for this one. Seeing how Texas' defense was last year and in week one, I still believe they're probably average. They just put together an incredible game plan for this one. Alabama has a lot of things to fix. They don't have any number one receiver right now. Jameer Gibbs was their top receiver. They need Cameron Latu back, who was their number one tight end, because 
the tight ends they're playing behind him really have, are no threat. Their offensive line was really getting pushed, which was really surprising mm-hmm. to me by Texas's front seven. There, there's a lot of stuff they had to figure out. Honestly, like you said, those those interesting calls, the what most likely should have been a safety on Bryce Young. Yeah. But if Bryce Young wasn't the quarterback of Alabama, I don't know if they pull that game out. No. In that fourth quarter, he was so composed and under control and made so many plays to keep them going. Like that play where he should have been sacked in the the last two minutes on the, uh, as they were driving down the field. Corner came on a wide open blitz, mm-hmm. had him straight up, and Bryce Young did something that only a few quarterbacks in the world could do. Yeah. How he, he dipped his shoulder, almost like bent over to the side, but also stayed standing so he didn't fall over, yeah. dipped and then ran for like a 15-yard first down, which was an incredibly athletic play. Right. But Alabama did just enough to win the game, and every most top teams have at least one game like this every season where it looks like you could get upset, but you just have to pull it out in the end. Yeah, Alabama has had these throughout the years, these types of games, and they've only lost them a few times. They luckily pulled this one out. But they they have a lot that they they have to work on. Yeah, and they're just like their receivers just didn't look up to par yeah. until very very late in the game. Uh, so yeah, fun game either way. Uh, Ohio State, kind of the same as Georgia, haven't really had any big tests. Marvin Harrison though, I mean, yeah, it's Arkansas he's State, but he's still, he's real. Yeah, it was a crazy game by him. And then here we go. We got to talk about him, the Michigan Wolverines. A decision has been made. And now, granted, in the grand scheme of things, Michigan looks fine. They've, they've Again, they've played nobodies. But the biggest they're playing thing, how they're supposed to play. The biggest but, yeah. thing that we talked about going into this was the quarterback decision. And we had no idea how they were going to make a decision in this. But then we realized at, in the Hawaii game, I was, I was very shocked, to be honest, uh, that it happened like this, that – Cade just didn't look that good. And I watched some of the Hawaii highlights, and there aren't any. Like, in their previous games before playing Michigan. Ugh. You literally, you have to watch their first drive against Vanderbilt yeah. in week zero <laughs> where they, they got out to 7 nothing. That's about it. They looked rough. Um, so, in this game, I was expecting, like, to be fair, though, when we first thought of it, it sounded like Cade wasn't even going to play in this game and that it was just going to be – his game in Colorado State, JJ's game in Hawaii. But he played, and he didn't play very well, and JJ has taken over the reins. And so now, Michigan fans can be happy, I, I assume. From what I've heard, most fans— Most Michigan fans are That's happy. what they want. Yeah. So, Malik, tell me how you're feeling right now. Honestly, this is how I expected it to go. I well first before I start that I want to say any Michigan fan that treats Cade McNamara poorly or boos him when he's in the game they are ridiculous mm-hmm. and they shouldn't be at the games they shouldn't be there supporting the team because that that's ridiculous he he helped get this team to the to a Big Ten championship he helped beat Ohio State and he helped he helped get them to the playoff mm-hmm. he deserves all the respect in the world and to be recognized as an important player in Michigan football history. Now, with that being said, this entire situation clearly has gotten to Cade mentally. Mm -hmm. The Colorado state game, he came out and he was off. He threw a weird pick in the red zone. You could clearly see he was frustrated. Yeah. Looked like he was cussing himself out almost. Cade comes, I mean, JJ comes in, instantly rips off a, like, 30-something yard rushing touchdown. Mm -hmm. Hawaii game, JJ's getting the start. It's just a clear difference. When JJ JJ McCarthy is out there leading the offense, there is an energy and an explosiveness that Cade just can't match. Mm -hmm. Even when JJ is just in the pocket, the way he stands in there, reads the pocket, reads the field, and throws it. It's just completely different. That 55, 50-yard post route he threw to Cornelius Johnson on a rope, Mm -hmm. his read was 
a little late, and he still put it right on him. That That's something Cade can't do. Whenever J.J. breaks out and does something with his feet, it's, it's something Cade really can't do. Mm-hmm. It's just a different level of upside. They could probably go 10-2 and two with Cade McNamara. But with J.J. McCarthy out there, there's a chance they could challenge Ohio State and try to get back to the playoff. Mm-hmm. And it's a weird, cruel situation. These things happen in football. I've said before, the Kelly Bryant situation is the most uh, recognizable and similar. Yeah. But, yeah, he closed the competition in this Hawaii game. And, mm-hmm. yes, it's Hawaii. They're not good. They're in a massive rebuild. But this is when you should look your best. This Against this competition is when you're supposed to ball out and look like a star. Right. J.J. did it. He looked confident. There was not a single amount of stress on him. The entire team was responding well to him. He had a big smile. Every throw he made was confident and on the, and on the money. Cade came in, went four of six with a pick, and looked down. And I feel sorry for Cade. I honestly do. I wish it was more of a situation like what Dave Aranda did with Baylor, where he told Jerry Bohannon in the spring, I'm naming Blake Shape in the starter. If you want to leave and go and try to be a starter somewhere else, I want you to have the opportunity. Jerry Bohannon left to South Florida and was instantly named the starter within like a, a, a month or two. I wish he would have gave Cade that same opportunity, but he feels so loyal to Cade that he he felt like, I guess, even that was disrespect. He wanted to give him a fighting chance. Mm-hmm. But when you put them two on the field, it's it's it was clear. Yeah. It was clear. Now, the big, I think the big question now for Michigan is, like, what is J.J. going to look like when the competition is tougher? That is the – When things get tough, now th- that's, what's that, going to happen? That's a very big question because after these first few weeks of the college football season, it looks like 80% of the games won't be very competitive. Right. They – even playing at Iowa doesn't seem as scary anymore. Mm-hmm. Because oh. as soon as Iowa's offense starts to fizzle, that that those fans in the stands, they've shown, they just go flat. And they will boo Spencer Petras. Yeah. So if that happens in the Michigan game, and Michigan has all the momentum, it won't be much pressure. Right. Exactly. So, again, wait and see. They got UConn uh, this week, and then Maryland the following. Um, okay, number five is Clemson. Nothing really to say. They haven't Dabble looked very got, impressive. He got paid. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, they're Clemson. They haven't played anybody. They've won. Nothing special. They have a bit of a problem with receivers right now, in my opinion. Mm. That game against Georgia Tech, it looked like there was a lot of, of out-of-sync plays. DJ looked kind of better than last year. Against Furman, they put up 35. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's very encouraging. Oklahoma, they're six. Nothing to write home about. Yeah. USC. Uh, I trust their passing game, and that's it. Yeah, they they haven't really shown much, but they're there. Eight, Oklahoma State. Again, not much to show. Number nine, Kentucky. Now, this was a good game. Knocked off Florida after Anthony Richardson looked awful in this game. Uh, after having a great performance in week one, so a lot of people were trying to figure out what Florida was going to look like. Uh, and Kentucky, you know, they handled the business. Uh, second half, they just kind of took over the game. Um, yeah, Anthony Richardson has a lot to learn Yeah, about being a quarterback in the SEC. And the mistakes he was making, it was very apparent that it was affecting him. Mm-hmm. You can see it in his body language and his facial expressions, especially that pick six he threw where it was miscommunication between him and the receiver and he threw it straight to the corner. Yeah. You could see that it, it was, yeah, it was weighing on him. Right. So there, there's a lot that he has to learn about going game to game and just keeping the confidence up and staying where he is. I still trust his ability, yeah. but yeah, it wasn't a good showing. Right. Kentucky honestly wasn't that great on offense. Either. No, and like they just were the better team and all the overall. hype around like Will Levis, like, Nah. It's all it's all based on physical stuff. Right. Yeah. So they've moved up eleven spots. That was a pretty big win for them. Uh at number ten, we got Arkansas. They were able to knock off Cincinnati in week one. That was a good win for them. Uh good way to start off the season. Then they played South Carolina. 
did pretty good. Nothing again, nothing to crazy like write home about or whatever. There's, there's one player I want to bring up. I brought him up in the SEC preview. Drew, Drew Sanders, mm-hmm. transfer from Alabama. I think he had 12 tackles total, two sacks, and like three tackles for loss and two forced fumbles. Yeah, he looks like an absolute beast. Mm-hmm. And Arkansas could potentially be the third or second best team in the SEC West. We'll get to Texas A&M. Yeah. Um, number eleven, the Spartans, Michigan State. They played Western. Took them a minute to get going in that game. They ended up winning. There, there was a point where it was getting a little tight. Yeah, uh, they ended up closing out 35-13. And then last week they played Akron, fifty-two nothing. But there is a little concern, not not big, because it's still early in the season. I was talking about Peyton Thorne being the second best quarterback in the Big Ten, and right now he's just not looking like it. Um, that's a little bit of a concern. Um, but the two new running backs have looked great. Berger and Broussard, like, they've just been pounding the rock. I, I still I, – I need to see how their O-line plays against Washington. Yeah. Because against Western and Akron, I expect them, those veteran running backs, to play the way they did. Right. But uh, – and so far the wide receivers look pretty solid as well. Um, Kind of what we expected. But Peyton Thorne just needs to clean it up a little bit. I don't know if it's just, you know, lower competitions getting sloppy, trying things. We'll wait and see. Um, BYU is at 12. They knocked off Baylor in double overtime. Yeah. They they have a really rough stretch coming up. Yeah. And if they can win, like, if they could go 2-1 and one in the next, like, three, they could really be, like, top 10 maybe. Yeah. They got Oregon, uh, Wyoming, Utah State, and then they get Notre Dame and Arkansas after that. Okay, I, th- I thought Arkansas so, was in the next three. But, yeah. No, so, but it's not easy. Tough schedule. Um, Miami is at 13. Eh. They didn't look very impressive against uh, Southern Miss, but yeah. new staff, it is what it is, I guess. Yeah. Um, Utah, they lost to Florida in the opening week, and then they put up 73 on Southern Utah. They're still one of the best teams in the Pac-12. Yeah. So they're at 15. Uh, 14. The best team, in my opinion. Tennessee is at 15. Um, really good win against Pittsburgh in overtime. Yeah. They're setting themselves up pretty well. Then we got NC State. Uh, they barely beat East Carolina in week one. Um, Baylor, like we just said, they just lost to BYU, so they're down to 17. Florida, as we said, lost to Kentucky. They're down to 18. Wake Forest at 19. Sam Hartman is back. Yeah. He played really well against Vandy. I'm happy for him. Yep. Um, Old Miss, they're at 20. And then we got Texas at 21, like we said, so close to beating Alabama. I would have been curious of where they would have went. I do not think they should be ranked. No? They are ranked now off of a moral loss. Yeah. And I don't believe in that. But, I mean, there's a bunch of uh, a te- – Although some teams did fall back. There's a bunch of teams that are 1-1, one and one, you know? like. Yeah. So – not too many undefeated teams this early in the season. Not too many meaningful games. I can see it. You lose by one to the number two ranked team. We'll find out who they really are in a couple weeks. Penn State, they're at 22. Um, Pitt at 23. Then we got Texas A&M at 24. <sighs> Lost to Appalachian State, 17-14. to 14 State this, did it again. This last weekend. Jimbo Fisher. Is he a fraud? <laughs> is he is he a fraud? Because the they have him paid and extended for a while. Yeah. And he is trying to run an offense that was only high level when Jameis Winston was the quarterback and there was unlimited speed all around and they played in the ACC. Mm-hmm. And like twelve defensive NFL players. Yeah. I I don't know why 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 hasn't he updated his scheme? Why won't he let somebody else come in? He has like twenty pieces of paper that he looks through when he's on the sideline to decide on decisions. They have to play like perfectly on offense to score. Mm-hmm. And I it feels like he's not aware of that. Like, he has these kids playing an offense that's just 
it, it's it's out of, it's outdated. It's I, I don't get it. It doesn't do. I just anything. don't understand nothing. <laughs> it doesn't do anything. <laughs> and I don't think any quarterback they put in, which is Max Max Johnson from LSU, the freshman Connor Wegman, I don't think it changes anything. Yeah, it's the same offense. Now I, they did lose two fumbles, so and that that's a problem. <clears throat> Bless you. Thank you. And App State's run defense, I mean run offense, was yeah. pretty good on their defense, which is unacceptable with all the high level players they have. Yep. It was. If I'm a Texas A&M fan, I'm have kind of having like a mental crisis right now. Yeah. Because I don't know what to think. Mm-hmm. Like you, you can't really, you can't fire him. You yeah. can't. But what, what do you think after that? Yeah. It's rough. Do you just, just stick with the plan? After I'm, 31 against Sam Houston and 14 against App State? Yeah, you got to figure something out. Otherwise, they're in for a long season. A they're long in for a season. long, like, five, six, seven years. Yeah, true, true. They got to get it together somehow. Um, and then we got 25. We got the Ducks of Oregon. They got blown out week one to Georgia. Um, and then they beat Eastern Washington this past weekend, 70 to 14. Yeah. Uh, big game for them, though, this week playing BYU, so. We'll get to see kind of where they're at um, after that game. Still, again, early on in the season, not too much craziness. But like I did say, conference play is is looming. Most teams have one more kind of easier week, and then they're getting into their conference games. So we'll see. Like I said, especially I want to see kind of what Michigan does now that J.J. is has taken the reins. And – Michigan State, when they're in tougher games, does Peyton kind of settle down and play better? Because he needs to. Uh, the run game, like you said, we'll see how they perform in bigger games too. They're going to need the versatility of their offense. So we'll just have to wait and see. Now, on to the NFL. Well, we, we didn't bring up. What did I know? The Leprechauns in, in, in Indiana. Oh, right, because they're not ranked. <laughs> we didn't bring them up. Ah, thank goodness. And the, the, beautiful Marshall, the beautiful Marshall Thundering Herd. Good reminder. I forgot because they're not in the 20, top 25, and I just had that pulled up. Notre Dame. Oh, boy. Notre Dame and, and the Dallas Cowboys have a few things in common right now. No wins. A hurt quarterback after a bad performance. Mm-hmm. And um, not a lot of faith in their coach. Nope. Even though Marcus Freeman is brand new. And a lot of hype that's unnecessary almost every year. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on this? I think it's funny. (laughs) Like I always say, Notre Dame, Alabama, there's two teams I do not care for. And I will not be shy about it. You know, Marshall is one of those programs, though, that's like known for being – Good enough, I guess, but not ever, you know, like breaking out into something like a Boise State necessarily. But they've been known to do this kind of thing every once in a while, and I think I just think it's fun. Yeah, Notre Dame's O line didn't look good; their run game looked non-existent. Yep. I feel bad for Tyler Buckner, not just because of the injury, but because I didn't realize this was the situation he was getting thrown into as a raw redshirt freshman, mm-hmm. and the defense was kind of getting bullied. Yeah. Yep. Poor, poor Irish. <laughs> poor Irish. Yeah. They got the number one recruiting class coming in. Who cares? And they got CJ Carr. Yeah. I hope they lose some more. They'll get something. So. One more thing. Scott Frost. Thank you for all the reminders because I yes. forgot to write everything down when we were sitting here. Ding. For Nebraska, it's ding dong. The witch is dead. Yes. It's over. <laughs> the era is over. 15 and 31, I believe. Oh, man. 5 and 22 in one score game. <laughs> It's so awful when you have to fire your head coach. The prodigal two, son. Two games into the season. Well, three. Three games. Yeah. Yeah. For them. yeah. Three games but into it, the season. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. Ah, it's, it's, a, it's a really – it might be one of the most sad coaching stretches I've ever seen. Yeah. Because he was supposed to be the one. Mm-hmm. Like it that it's almost like imagine if Jim Harbaugh came to Michigan and he did that at Michigan. Right. It would be just as sad. Like this, I it's tough. Yep. I'm sure if he goes back to the group of five, he'd be pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, I 
The other one that I forgot to bring up while we're we were looking because I was like, there's no, there's more than just those upsets. Uh, Washington State beat Wisconsin. Beat Wisconsin. Those Big West, Big Ten West teams are struggling. Although Minnesota, they do look like they might be at the top just because mm-hmm. they're consistent. Maybe. Yep. Just maybe. So shouts out to the Sun Belt, Marshall, App State. And Georgia Southern all got upsets. Yeah. The Fun Belt Conference is coming. It was a fun weekend of college football. There's a lot of crazy games. Yeah. So, all right. Now to the NFL. Uh, week one, the NFL was similar. It was fun, but it was weird. And it it's hard to describe. Um, we'll kind of talk about them uh, as we go through picks uh, just to save some time. But. Yeah, games were kind of crazy. In week one of picks, I reign supreme. You do. I, I You deserve all the credit. I won 10-5 in picks. Listen, I, I was I was I was way too loose last I mean two weeks ago. I was about to say last yeah. week. I was too confident. Mm-hmm. I was still reeling off of what I did last year. I, I got to get my head into the game. I'm here. Yep. yep. Uh, I'm here. The notable picks that I got right, Buffalo over the Rams, uh, Miami, um, Washington, the Giants. That was my big one that I, you know, took a leap on. That one paid off. Minnesota was a difference. It, Kansas City over Arizona. We're gonna, we'll have to talk about that one after the show. Didn't we? <laughs> I thought we both picked Kansas City. Yeah, apparently, you picked Arizona. I picked Arizona? Yeah. Why did I pick Arizona? Well, you know. Why did I pick Arizona? I, you know what? I I, I, I have no memory of picking Arizona. I mean, I can go back and watch the tape, and maybe we'll we might change, have to. Maybe we'll change the number. I but. might have to throw a challenge flag on that one. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, week one is in the books, and we're on to week two. Can you can you give the score? Can you flex a little? Ten to five. Ten to five. Golf clap. Great, great week. Thank you. I appreciate it. Fantastic. Uh, I know it's a long, long season ahead, though, so I can't get too, too comfortable. So, starting off with week two, Thursday night is a good game. We don't get to see these too often on Thursday nights, but it's been two weeks in a row. We've had two good Thursday night games. This week is the Chargers at Kansas City. Patrick Mahomes looked incredible last week. Threw for five touchdowns, over 360 yards. Machine. Um, Chargers looked pretty good, too. Uh, they didn't look spectacular. Keenan Allen did go down in this game. Uh, but Justin Herbert, you know, kind of did his thing. And the Chargers' defense, with those moves that they made in the offseason, getting Khalil Mack and just getting healthy with Joey, Bo- yeah. Joey Bosa, that Derwin pressure, James. That pressure on Derek Carr was serious. Yeah, I'm, I'm real interested to see how they're going to do defensively in this game because Kansas City's offensive line looked really good last week. Um, so this game could be anybody. Uh, Kansas City is favored. I don't know if I want to go up, go out on a limb just yet. Um, I'll, do you want me to pick first? Or do you you, want? you go ahead. Okay. You go ahead. I'm going to take the Chargers. Okay. I've talked myself into it. Um, it's a close enough game. I'm going to bank on that Chargers defense. Khalil Mack, Joey Bosa, just getting pressure on Patrick Mahomes like he did not see last week. Listen, a lot of people – have Justin Herbert as one of the top three MVP favorites. And I completely understand it. He looks like a phenom. I'm going Chiefs. I feel like Andy Reid is going to scheme something up like he usually does. Mm -hmm. And it might take a quarter or a quarter and a half. But I think the Chiefs figure it out and they end up winning it. Yeah. Fair game. Um, Oh, boy. Washington... And Detroit. Let's let's talk about those boys. Yeah. In their first game last week, Joey. What were your thoughts? What were your takeaways? Offense looked good. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Offense looked good uh for three quarters. Still some second quarter problems. Yeah. Uh what part of the defense is the worst to you? Um hmm. the line. Really? The linebackers. Okay. Oh, in the secondary. Uh, I, I, I figured secondary. It's all was a, yeah. terrible. What was Tracy Walker doing? Now, I will say they showed the stat. Jeff Okuda held oh, Devontae four. Smith to 0-4. Oh, 
school's progress baby steps. I, I guess it's something. <laughs> he wasn't on uh, A.J. Brown, though. Uh, nobody was. That man had a monster game. He did. Uh, Jalen Hurts, though, actually was like the most accurate ca- uh, quarterback in week one, apparently. Um, to Him and A.J. Brown An- were on point together. Yeah. Rodrigo looked good. He did. He did. Um, also, your your guy, Aiden Hutchinson. Not great. Uh, was ranked one of the worst uh, defensive yeah. ends of week one. He also was one of the be- was against one of the better offensive lines in football. Yes, yes. So there's a lot to see, a lot to yeah. wait. Not uh, a good start. To be honest, I really yeah. don't know what the worst part of their defense is. It looked bad all around. Gave up 200 yards uh, on the ground. Gave almost 200 yards up to AJ Brown. I, j- I I've been saying offense is fun. Looks great. Jared Goff has looked comfortable. He did throw that one bad a, pick. He had a bad first half. Yeah. That first half was rough. But they it's so weird they don't look to like DJ Shark very often still. I feel like that's got to be something that they implement in the future. DeAndre Swift looked like a man on a mission though. That's fun to watch. I, I thought it was weird how much they did not target TJ TJ Hawkinson throughout the game. Yeah. I feel like he's supposed to be the safety blanket. Mm-hmm. So they they're kind of where I want them to be though. They're fun to watch. There's some hope. But they're still bad enough they're going to lose. I feel like they should have won that game. They probably should have. They probably should have. And that's the step they need to get over. And now, this weekend, the Lions are a one-and-a-half-point favorite. If that holds, Is that a good thing? <laughs> if that holds till Sunday, Malik, this will be the first time the Lions are favored in 24 football weeks. That's crazy. Listen. Give me the Washington Commanders. <laughs> Carson Wentz, literally, that one game last week showed, I think, like the entire career of Carson Wentz in one game. Mm-hmm. Four touchdowns. High two highs. Interceptions. It's very weird low lows. Mm-hmm. And a middle ground where it's like, man, this kid is good. Yeah. He made some throws that showed why he was one of the top picks in his draft. Yeah. And they ended up winning. Jahan Dotson, two touchdowns, three catches. Mm-hmm. Commanders could be something. Ron yeah. Rivera could coach them into being a quality, especially in a weird jumbled NFC East right now. Yeah. And they have a weird, like, I'm scared of this game because, like, Antonio Gibson now has the reins again because of the Brian Robinson thing. They threw it a lot to him. He ran okay, didn't run a lot. But they also have Curtis Samuel, who's healthy now. I feel like they can give the Lions a lot of weird looks that they're not going to be ready for, which is exactly what happened last week with the Eagles. Uh, I I can't believe I might not pick the Lions two weeks in a row, but I got to pick the Lions because I have the lead. Listen, I got to take it while I can. It's possible this is one of those weeks where Carson Wentz just goes full Wentz. Yeah. And it's like the last game of last season against Jacksonville. Mm-hmm. But I feel like he's confident, and he is – Really in tune with the receivers He's after one game. Really good weapons. Um, yeah. The only thing I'm banking on is it's the Lions at home. Crowd was incredible last week. Hoping they can bring it again, um, even after a loss. I'm going for the Lions. They have. The, come on, just give me one. Uh, okay, Jets at the Browns. Oof, ugly game. This could uh, be. Do ugly. we do we really have to? <laughs> No. Did you did you see the highlights of the Jets? Uh, did you see your boy? Yeah, he threw like sixty sometimes. <laughs> it was crazy. The Jets. Listen, at least the the Browns showed they're still a tough team. Yes. Even with Jacoby Brissett being average, their running game and their defense can hold them. Yeah. Donovan yeah. Peoples Jones was really good. Mm-hmm. Every catch he made was contested. Yeah. And he kept the chains moving. Yeah. So yeah, Brad Browns and Mari Cooper was a non-factor. Yes. Uh, Buccaneers at the Saints. This one is interesting. Saints came back last week. That game was that that might have been like my favorite game. Like seeing the, going back and forth on red zone. Mm-hmm. It was so crazy seeing Jameis do what he did in that fourth quarter, yeah. and seeing Michael Thomas just light up in that second half. Because mm-hmm. Mariota and the Falcons, they had control. Yeah, in the first half, mm-hmm. and Cordero Patterson. He is such a strange, fantastic hybrid. <laughs> yeah. He did I think he rushed for over a hundred yards in yeah. that game. That was like hundred and twenty six, I think. Yeah. They didn't 
target Kyle Pitts many times, which was strange. No, but he's notorious for struggling against the Saints. The Saints are really good at covering him. Uh, last year, he did nothing against the Saints. Yeah, so that's, but the Falcons might be funner than I thought. Yeah. They just might be because Arthur Smith, it looks like he's scheming up some really cool stuff Yeah, with those weapons. And the Saints won that game with no production, basically, from Alvin Kamara. So, mm. yeah, I think this game could be close. Um, I still think I'm going to give it to the Bucks defense. I, I think they're just better. They, they, man, they embarrassed the Cowboys. And I think, too, now that the Bucks know they're going to be without Chris Godwin, if you didn't watch the game, Chris Godwin uh, hurt his hamstring in the game after coming back from his ACL last year. Looks like he's going to be out a couple weeks. Um, so now they're going to look to Julio Jones and Russell Gage to replace that. I think now that you know they're going to get a full week of practice, they're not going to have to worry about Godwin. Those guys are going to get the reps. I think they're going to be ready to go. And I just think the Bucks are a little bit better right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Saints surprise. Brady has not had a great track record against New Orleans in his time in, in Tampa Bay. And with this game being in New Orleans, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. I'm going to go with the Saints in week two. I really like how well-rounded that receiving core looked. It seems like they have trust in Jameis, and Jameis has trust in them. Mm -hmm. And the Saints just always seem to get pressure on Brady. And he, he'll throw two or three picks. Yeah. And he'll get super frustrated, and this might be another one of those games. It could be... A kind of a switch. The Bucks could win, but I, I'm I'm going to go with the Saints. Okay. I think this next game is really interesting as well. Panthers at the Giants. This is a pretty interesting one. Saquon is back. He looked really good. He put that team on his back. Yeah. Daniel Jones didn't really make too many mistakes. Uh, he did throw one interception, but I love that, that clip of Brian Dable getting into him on the sidelines. Yeah. Because it seems like the the franchise the the front office of the Giants, it seems like they've never wanted to get on Daniel Jones. Right. They're just like, he's our guy. We picked him, and we always believe in him, and it'll it'll just happen. Mm -hmm. Brian Dayball is like, no. Yeah. Every time you mess up, I'm, I'm in your face. Right. You're going to listen. Mm -hmm. and, and that call for that two-point conversion. Yeah. So much respect. And he was uh, – Daniel Jones was 17 of 21, 188 yards, two touchdowns, and interception. Yeah. That's pretty clean for the most part. If you keep him in that range mm -hmm. between like 20, 25 passes, 30 at the most, if right. he's hot, you could have something mm -hmm. if the rest of the team is playing up to what they could be. Right. Um, and then on the other side, the Panthers, ugh, they, they looked rough. Bad first half, pretty good second half, not enough Yeah. to get it done. So this is where I think they could turn it around. I think the Panthers, in the end, are more talented. They Like, Baker just looked bad. Uh, he didn't get it to DJ Moore very often. They didn't throw it to Christian McCaffrey very often. I don't know if they're afraid Christian is going to get hurt again. Did yeah. it seem like that? A little. And I feel like you can't play that way. You can't. You, this is yeah. the NFL we're talking about. You have to go He has to be one of the main focal points. Yeah. And I almost felt like Baker would play – some of the same way, like he didn't want to make a mistake against his former team. And I I feel like Baker's more of that guy where he's kind of a he's got to let a it go. Slinger. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm, the fourth I'm quarter, in the fourth quarter, he showed more of it. I, I think he went like eight for nine with like yeah. 120 something yards in the fourth quarter. Yeah. And he hit Robbie Anderson on a big touchdown. So I think the Panthers are going to bounce back in this one, even though I think Saquon Barkley could take this game over again as well. But I'm going to go with the Panthers. I'm also going to take the Panthers. Okay. I don't trust Daniel Jones against a young, hungry defense. Yeah. Even though Brian Dayball could scheme some things up to get those receivers open. I don't trust Kenny, Gall Kenny Galladay. <sighs> I'm, see, I'm trying to – I don't know why I'm starting to rethink this. Go to the Panthers. <laughs> yeah. I'm going Panthers. Uh, Patriots at the Steelers. Steelers – that was one of the most flukish, weird wins I've seen. Snuck away with a victory over the Cincinnati Bengals, forcing yeah. Joe Burrow into five turnovers, blocking a kick, and it was just craziness. Can I pick first? I go for it. TJ Watt is out for a while. Mm -hmm. Is it torn tricep? Is that what it is? I can't remember. Something like that. Yeah. No, it's his peck. Okay, torn peck. Mac Jones and the Patriots offense last week. 
they looked not good. Bad. They looked not good, but it's it's I can't fully explain why they were so bad. Like I don't I don't do I don't know anything. I don't know if it was Bill Belichick's like plan. I don't know if it's like a lack of playmakers. I can't tell which part. Mm-hmm. That's why I I don't know what to like judge the Patriots on at this point. But I'm gonna go Steelers even without J- TJ TJ Watt because their second their defense overall was just on top of everything. Mm-hmm. They were on, and unless Mac Jones is like 24 of like 26 and just extremely efficient and just dinking and dunking down the field, yeah, this Steelers I think they're still gonna get on with blitzes and different ways to get to him. And I think Trubisky gets a little bit more comfortable. And Steelers win. I'm in the same boat. I think the Steelers are going to win this game. I think it's mostly off of their defense. I just think New England's got nothing special on offense. And that's just a problem. They just don't have any, like, weapons they can go to. The Steelers, at least, I'm not sure if Najee Harris is going to play or not, uh, per se. But if he does, he could be a special player. They got a good enough receiving core. I think George Pickens is going to get involved more um, as the season goes on. Like you said, Trubisky is going to get better. But the defense, like, even without T.J. Watt, they have Minka Fitzpatrick and stuff like that. And I I don't think the Patriots' defense is as good as they've been in the past either. So, yep, I also agree. I think Pittsburgh is going to win this game. Uh, Colts of the Jaguars. I think this one is more interesting. The Colts tied the Texans last week. Uh The Jaguars, they lost to Washington uh, late in the game. And if you don't remember, the Jags knocked off the Colts last year from making the playoffs. So will the Colts come back and have a revenge tour, or will Jacksonville get their number again? What do you think? If Jacksonville can get pressure on Matt Ryan, it could get kind of ugly. Mm-hmm. But at this point, I still trust Matt Ryan more than Trevor Lawrence. And the Colts, they're they're still a really well built team. They have Jonathan they, Taylor. They can't lose to Jacksonville and be zero one and one. Colts. Okay. They can't be oh one and one. Uh this is where I'm gonna use my lead. I'm gonna take Jacksonville. No sense whatsoever, just I'm gonna take Jacksonville. Uh, I think they have some weapons here now. Trayvon Walker actually looked pretty good. He had a pick, I believe. He had one really good rush and got a sack, and then he had that pick. Yeah, yeah. Off of so Carson Wentz. solid debut for him. I think Jacksonville is getting close to turning the corner. James Robinson looked good, coming back healthy. Christian Kirk had a good, uh, good game with Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence still doesn't look super comfortable yet, so I'm waiting for that to happen. That's the only thing that maybe makes me nervous. But it's just one of those gut calls. I'm going to go with the Jags. Dolphins at the Ravens. Both teams getting week one wins. Dolphins kind of proved a lot. They looked really good in their game. Tyreek Hill, Tua looked great. Uh, I will admit the Waddle is probably the best touchdown celebration. I love it. one of the best. I enjoy it, especially because the fans got involved in it. Um, If you haven't seen it, go look it up. Uh, It's all over the internet. But, man, the Ravens are just one of those teams, even though they don't have J.K. Dobbins again. Uh, it looks like he's going to be hurt, maybe for a little while. Who knows? They're just one of those teams that gets it done somehow. Devin Duvernay got two touchdowns last week. Uh, I mean, they have hardly used Rashad Bateman. He caught that deep pass for a yeah, touchdown. Yeah, a late one. Even Lamar like didn't do anything crazy necessarily in this game, and they still figured out how yeah, to win. The first half, I was kind of like on, not on edge, but – it was weird seeing that they were, like, keeping it a game with New York because yeah. they couldn't get much going on offense. Right. And I know it's the Jets, so it's not something special, but the Ravens are just one of those teams. And I think their defense is much improved. I think the Ravens are going to win this game just because they're secondary. Like, even though it is Tyreek Hill, I don't think, like we've said in the past, Tua's got to prove that he can get it to Tyreek on some of those crazy plays. Otherwise, I think the Ravens' improved secondary is going to take care of business in this game. I'm going with the Dolphins. Respect. I don't have like any Just a gut call. Okay. I don't have any yeah, extra crazy reason. I do think their defense can make it even tougher than the Jets made it on them in that first half. Yes, and I think they have what it takes to respond on offense like the Jets couldn't. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
It's a, it should be a really good game. Falcons at the Rams. Will the Rams go 0 and 2 after they lost to Buffalo week 1? No. Rams win. I agree. I think the Falcons will surprise a little bit, but they can't hang. Rams defense is too good. Seahawks and 49ers. Seahawks lead the NFC West. So the 49ers played in a swamp. And both young quarterbacks didn't really look great. Mm -hmm. But Trey Lance couldn't make any plays. So they ended up losing. Mm -hmm. That Seattle defense played their butts off. They did. They They really did. I don't. They can't really be that good. (laughs) They've been bad for like the past two years. Mm Mm-hmm. I, I just don't see them just being like a fantastic defense all of a sudden. And I think San Francisco's defense has a point to prove this week. Yeah. So I'm going with the 49ers. Okay. I don't think Geno Smith goes almost perfect <laughs> against the 49ers. And I'm riding the Seattle hype train. Why? I don't like Geno Smith. <laughs> <laughs> I was, then why are you riding the Seattle hype train? I think train? Rashad Penny can hold the hold the fort down if he stays healthy. Uh, DK Metcalf is just an animal, and I think they're going to figure out how to get him the ball even more, even though they did a good job of it, I think, last week. Um, but I think they're going to take some more deep sh- uh, deep shots. And then, yeah, something about their defense. Like, they just played really well, and I, I don't know what it Tariq is. Tariq Woolen looks really good as the rookie. I, he was one that I, that I wanted. Uh, that's somebody that I liked coming out of college. Cody Barton was flying all over the place, too. Yeah, I don't even know where he's from. Yeah. Is he, is he older? Is he younger? I don't know. Not sure I'm going to have to <laughs> look on Google. Yeah. Um, but I know the 49ers do have some injuries again. George Kittle is a little banged up. Elijah Mitchell now is out for eight weeks or so, so it's going to be Jeff Wilson, which he should be fine. Um, but we still haven't seen Trey Lance have to throw the ball. Like we said, last week was a mess, so this is kind of their first rodeo with him. Um, and I think Seattle's going to really be feeling it off that win. Uh, over Russ in Monday night. So I'm going with Seattle. Cincinnati at Dallas. Come on now. Dak's out for eight weeks or something like that. They're going to play with Cooper Rush. Bengals almost won, even though Joe Burrow turned the ball over five times. This this is a no-brainer. Outside of Cooper Rush's family, who's giving the Cowboys a chance in this one? America. Jerry. Yeah. Jerry wants us all to believe. All right, Texans at the Broncos. Texans, like we said, hung in with the Colts, tied the game. Russ lost in Seattle on Monday night. I'm going Broncos. I'm not even, t- like, giving it a second thought. Okay. Broncos. I'm going with Houston. They're going to beat the cornball. I'm starting to not like Russell Wilson. I'll be honest. Why? <laughs> the more stuff that just keeps coming out of him, like, all his videos, his interviews, his – his pregame rituals, like, it, you know, do whatever you got to do. You're a professional quarterback. You're living a much better life than I am. But, man, it's just it's just weird. Like, it, it looks like he's been hanging out with Aaron Rodgers or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't, this is how Russ has always been. I don't think it's much difference. I don't know. To me, it's just maybe it's just because social media is blowing up, but it, it's been too much for me lately. I think the Texans, I, I think they're a serviceable team, and I think they – they somehow like stay in these kind of games, and I, I think, think I think Nathaniel Hackett rebounds from one of the worst coaching debuts of all time, and I think Lovey Smith still does Lovey Smith things, and Russ makes plays. Yeah. Uh, Cardinals at the Raiders. Holy moly, the Cardinals looked awful. Without a second thought, I'm taking the Raiders. I am as well, because I don't know what the the Cardinals have to. It's like one of those things, Cardinals. You have to prove it. Before I can pick. Without DeAndre Hopkins, it looks lost. like they're lost. Yes, yeah. exactly. Uh, the Raiders, uh, Derek Carr just had a bad game, I think. I, I think yeah. they can bounce back. Um, they didn't really like get blown out by the Chargers. They just lost. I think they just need to spread the ball around a little bit more, and they'll be fine. Uh, they'll get back on track. Uh, Chicago at the Packers, Sunday night. This is a weird game. It is. <laughs> it is. Is I, I want to hear your thoughts first on this one. I'm picking Chicago. Because what do you take away from that first week from either of these teams? You can't take a whole lot. <laughs> you can't take a whole lot. Uh, they got the ball to Darnell Mooney one time for Chicago. Uh, Justin Fields looked pretty good late in the game. Uh, their running game was all right. 
And that's about it. And then Green Bay, like, Aaron Rodgers looked not very happy. He looks like he hates his receiving core. Yes. <laughs> uh, it'll be interesting because um, Alan Zard may come back this week. We're not 100% sure. But you can see the talent from, like, guys like Christian Watson and Romeo Dubs. That, that wide-open drop was just – Yeah. It, it, after that, everything went downhill. Yeah. And then, I mean, Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are just super good. So and, you said you're picking the Bears. Yeah, but I'm picking the Bears. I just think this might be a, a Justin Fields show-out game. I'll pick the Packers. Okay. I'm playing with my lead maybe a little too much, but I got some room. Um. Yeah, it's just one of those games. Titans at the Bills. Who has faith in the Titans at this point? I don't know, man. Like, Derrick Henry looked like Derrick Henry, but he didn't get any big explosive plays. I expect it's going to happen at some point. But the Bills just look so good. And their defense looks even better than they were. They're ready to make a run. Yeah. They're ready. I'm, I'm excited to see what they do. I'm excited. Easy one, Bills. And then the second Monday night game, Vikings at the Eagles. Kirk Cousins versus Jalen Hurts. An incredible QB battle we're about to watch. Justin Jefferson and A.J. Brown. That's, that's, the, yeah, that's the real matchup. I don't know what to think because Vikings are that team that I think is going to be – Surprisingly good. Yeah, I, I think they're going to be able to probably – like almost most likely win the NFC North. The Eagles, this is a bigger matchup for them. Like if they can play good against the Vikings, then I can actually believe in them. Uh, they were one of my preseason favorites as well as the Eagles to do something this year. But the Lions, like, they carved up the Lions, but the Lions carved them up. I thought the Eagles' defense was going to be better than they were. Um, so this will be a big game for them. Um, man, I don't know. I'm going to go Minnesota. Okay. I think their defense can hold Jalen Hurts in check. All right. Then to make it an interesting week, I will go with Philadelphia. Go with the home field advantage. I think it's going to be a fun, electrifying game. Uh, could be a lot of big plays. The Eagles like to mix it up in different ways with all their running game, but then now they can stretch the field with A.J. Brown and then Justin Jefferson, man. The plays he made last week were incredible. It was um, it was almost it was more embarrassing on the Packers to me. Yeah. Justin, Je- Justin Jefferson is a great young receiver. Mm-hmm. But, but he was wide open a few times. That's, it, it made no sense how wide open. They were supposed to be they're supposed to be one of the better secondaries in the league. Yeah. But DeAndre Swift just carved out the the Eagles defense. Dalvin Cook is just as good. So I'm I'm interested to see how this game pans out. Um but there we go. There's our week two picks, and that is about perfect timing for our wrap up. Heading into week two of the NFL season. Week three of the college football season, for the most part. Yeah. I got nothing. Got nothing. Where's your, from one to ten, what's your feeling on the Lions right now? Ten being the most confident, one being the least. Mm-hmm. Are you just somewhere in the middle right yeah, now? Yeah, I think I'm like at a five, because, I don't know. The offense is fun. The defense is bad. Can't have many more moral victories. Same Although old. this is still a rebuild, but same old Lions. You said it, not me. This has been views from the sidelines. We'll see you guys next time. I think Washington will probably beat MSU. Ten teams struggling in the West. <laughs> <laughs>